Hello, this is Dr. Anayeli Lopez, and today I will be talking to you about Chapter 5, The Spiritual Person. So spirituality has played um, a different role in social work over the ages. And social work has deep and honorable roots um, religion, uh, in religion. The profession grew out of a 19th century um, effort, um, many of them church-based, to address social problems associated with poverty, urbanization, and immigration. Um, many um, friendly visitors received church stipends to support direct relief, prayer, and evangelism offered to people struggling with life challenges. And throughout the profession's history, there always has been deeply committed social workers guided by their sincere and earnest uh, religious faith. Um, however, um, you know, different complex challenges have um, or arise. Um, when strongly held principles of faith collide with social work values or vice versa. Um, so again, social work does have a, a um, religious or spiritual roots, but oftentimes um, there's also a complicated relationship between social work and religion. Some issues, for example, the um, may conflict are one of them um, would be um, same-sex marriage and another one um, would be abortion in which um, many times um, the church would oppose those issues um, and as social workers we are called um, to advocate um, for those issues and for um, populations um, within um, those uh, groups. So again, similarly, um, again, religions historically have played a, a role in providing help and social programs to poor and at risk populations, um, including those within um, different uh, oppressed groups. Um, however, religious uh, texts have also used an oppressive force and have helped validate individuals denying equal rights or treatment to certain groups. Um, people of color, women, gay, uh, lesbians, bisexual, and transgender individuals have all been negatively affected throughout um, the use of individuals citing religious texts. Um, so for you, what are some positive examples uh, or some changes of positive changes that religious groups have helped bring about. Um, for example, when I was working in Indiana uh, a few or several years ago, uh, I was working for a Mennonite uh, university um, and um, people within this religious um, Christian group, um, they were motivated by principles of social justice um, to really advocate for different op oppressed populations within um, their community, including immigrants. Um, but one of the issues that they really struggled with was um, same-sex se marriage. And one of the policies within their university was um, that um, basically people couldn't be um, open uh, about uh, their gender and sexual identity, um, especially professors. Um, so that's, again, in, in one way, they brought about positive change within the community because, um, again, they were very supportive of uh, immigrant populations and um, they advocated on, on their behalf um, and against um, very conservative groups. Um, the, again, they were more open-minded 
and with but with other issues related to LGBTQ issues, they really struggle with that issue. And some um, members of their congregations were in favor, and some were against. Um, so that's an example that I wanted to provide. So historically, in terms of race and ethnicity, um, Black churches have been a safe haven for African Americans facing racism and oppression. And they are also an important source of social support, um, race uh, conscientiousness and inspiration, leadership training, human services, and empowerment and social change. So again, this has his, historically black churches have been a, or served as a very positive influences for African Americans, um, providing you know, different type of um, social capital. Um, and specifically for Latinos, um, uh, spirituality among Latinos has been influenced by a number of factors, including military, political, economic, culture, and religious um, conquest. And all of those factors um, for, forced indigenous individuals to adopt Catholicism to varying degrees. And um, many traditions of worship, spiritual texts, beliefs, and other practices were destroyed, repressed, or blended within the Catholic faith. And uh, Latino faith generally um, has several cent central features, including a personal relationship with God that encompasses love and reverence, as well as fear and dread. And there's an emphasis on both faith and ritual behavior. Uh, there's a belief in holiness of Jesus Christ, Christ as Savior. Um, and there's a special reverence shown to Mary as the mother of God. And there's a recognition of saints as model of, of behaviors. Um, and there are, um, there's a significance of sacred objects as both symbols of faith and transmitters of black and magic. Um, and also with Latinos, there are different special events and um, celebrations um, associated with the spirituality, including Saints Feast Days, Holy Week, Christmas Eve, Feast of the um, Virgin and Life Passages. So again, um, these are just some examples of like, with the Latino faith, um, how um, spirituality and um, religion is, it's very important. Um, and in particular, um, similar to uh, the Black church, I would say that for Latinos, a church is a safe, safe haven. Uh, recently, um, my colleagues and I from, um, well, they're from Denver, uh, but based on a study in Indiana, we wrote, um, an article on how um, the Latino church and Latino religious leaders serve as a refuge for um, Latino immigrants um, because that's where they feel safe, um, especially for those who are undocumented because you know they won't ask um, about their immigration status and they feel safe being there and actually also with the culture, that's one of the places where they feel that they can relate to other people and that they can celebrate some of the traditions that I just um, spoke about. And during this study, uh, we also learned that like, for example, um, during a specific um, crisis such as um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, especially those who were more vulnerable, who were undocumented and who were not able to receive um, support from the government, um, from social, yeah, from social programs from the government, 
they could receive uh, informal support from the churches. The churches were providing um, some of the basic needs that people needed, and they felt safe going to the churches because nobody was going to ask about their immigration status. So several themes can be found uh, among the religions mentioned uh, in this uh, slide um, related um, to Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. The connection among um, these are the divinity of all the beings, the need to transcend suffering and the material world, the importance of displaying compassion, selflessness, cooperation, and the honoring of ancestors, um, and a disciplined approach to life and a spiritual development, um, and a holistic approach to understand, understanding um, existence. So common themes in Native American spirituality include the inseparability of spirituality from the rest of life, connection to and responsibility for the earth and all the, um, the creatures in the earth, the sacredness of all things, including animals, plants, minerals, and natural forces, the values of balance, harmony, and connectedness, and the importance of extended family and community and the use of myth, ritual, and storytelling as a spiritual practice. So specifically as it relates to um, women uh, or sex and, and gender and different um, religious um, institutions, um, historically, um, women have been excluded um, or restricted from holding certain leadership positions um, or to engage in certain rites or ceremonies within different uh, religions, religious um, institutions. So in response, uh, some scholars are calling for increased ordination of women and more women in leadership roles. Um, for example, Christian and Jewish um, feminists have made efforts to emphasize the, men, the feminine heritage of conventional faith in some Christian and Jewish denominations have increased opportunities for women to hold both leadership and clerical roles. Um, I, um, additionally, Jewish feminism and Christian and uh, womenist um, spirituality emphasize a feminine aspect of the divine the sacredness of women's bodies, uh, rhythms and life cycles, the power and creativity of women's spirituality and a connection to earth-centered practices and the care of all people on the planet. So historically, non-heterosexual groups have um, been oppressed by spiritual or faith-based organizations. Um, in particular, um, yeah, like I said, um, individuals within LGBTQ groups, um, they're often discriminated um, against and by different religious institutions. Um, and especially, you know, people who Individuals who grew up in less tolerant religious communities experience considerable tension between their faith and sexuality. Um, like I said, in Indiana, um, I experience um, where I grew up in, um, in, in that community, uh, the majority of um, individuals were um, evangelical um, conservative individuals who um, were less tolerant to individuals from the LGBTQ group. Uh, and there was another community where I worked after receiving my master's degree that they were also a religious group. And like I said, even though, well, um, some members of their community were still not accepting of LGBTQ groups as a group, they were more tolerant and more open uh, and more accepting of uh, individuals um, coming from L the LGBTQ community. 
Um, on the other hand, the other community that was more um, conservative, they were less accepting. Um, and I believe it, it was a lot harder for people um, growing up within those um, that community or some of, of those families um, because um, they were not tolerant um, due to their or yeah they were not tolerant um, of people who came from a different sexual orientations. So again, um, religion can be very positive and then there are also some uh, negative aspects of um, religion as well. So as social workers, we're gonna use spirituality and religion in a positive way um, by focusing on solving problems um, in the living well, supporting optimal human functioning and quality of life. So again, we're gonna use it in a positive way. Um, we need to be open and accepting. Um, and if someone uh, is a spiritual or religious, we need to also accept them. Um, but um, you know, the purpose is to help them um, achieve again optimal functioning and quality of life and we're not going to use it in a way um, in which we might uh, oppress or discriminate against others mm. so indicators of spirituality such as religious commitment um, have shown um, to have an inverse relationship with depression, anxiety, hopelessness, suicide, and mental health problems, and have a positive relationship with self-esteem, self-efficacy, hope, optimism, life, satisfaction, and general well-being. Again, uh, my experience has been working with immigrant populations, including those with undocumented status. Um, and I have seen both through my practice and through research that, um, for those Latino immigrants who, um, again, have found a safe heaven in, in the churches, they receive um, a spiritual and emotional support and even social support because that's where they find a sense of belonging. Um, and they have um, even though, you know, or despite all the problems that they face due to their immigration status, they find um, a sense of hope um, through their religion. And also they find um, social religious um, support through um, the Latino religious leaders who provide even... Um, support in other ways such as providing basic needs um, helping them find a job helping them in um, in those uh, critical situations where they don't do not have uh, um, anyone else or or they're afraid of seeking help anywhere else again some both mental and physical health problems religion and spirituality have been shown to use as a positive way of coping um, and higher levels of social support through religious and spiritual networks also play a significant role in positive coping. Um, and a spirituality has also been viewed as a protective factor in substance abuse recovery. So again, um, there are some positive things. And like I said, through the population that I have worked with, um, I have seen it and I can testify that um, their religion and spirituality has made a difference in helping them cope. Like for example, like I said, undocumented immigrants, um, you know, they experience um, a lot of um, anxiety and fear due to their status. And they're often afraid of seeking resources um, because um, they're afraid that someone will ask for about their status and that they will be deported. But on the other hand, they really trust the churches. They really trust religious leaders. Um, and um, they feel comfortable seeking resources from those places. 
um, and they often find support, you know, from those places, including um, social support and a sense of uh, belonging. And um, also, it is important that, you know, as social workers, we see um, and are interested in the person holistically, not just in their mental health problems, but see them um, as holistic, um, as holistic um, human beings, um, and that there are different aspects um, that will contribute to their well-being. And there are other ways um, that we can, um, or other resources that we can help people connect with, uh, also the, depending on their beliefs. Um, and again, because spirituality doesn't necessarily mean religion. So there are other ways um, that perhaps people um, are interested in, um, or resources that people are interested in in order to cope with some of their problems, including alternative medicine, um and um other types of yeah so, or i guess some examples are found there even such as acupuncture massage therapy mindfulness relaxation techniques um spinal manipulation so we cannot force people to um to find or or to seek um solutions um, from traditional medicine or from traditional therapy um, because that's you know that's the way we uh, or that's what we believe is a correct um, a correct solutions so um through this chapter as we learn about the importance of spirituality and uh, the role it plays in a person's life, uh, we need to make sure that as social workers, we integrate um, spirituality in the assessment that we conduct of our clients um, we serve. Um, and again, it, it needs to address not just um, the um, surface affiliations with religious or faith-based groups, but also more about uh, the person's spiritual life and how spirituality helps people cope. So uh, it is important to assess both the positive and the negative aspects of a client's religious or spiritual belief and practices. So again, I mentioned about some of the potential um, negative aspects as well as, as a negative. And here are some um, spiritual assessment tools and also in the canvas page you will find additional spiritual assessment tools that you can use and these will be helpful as well uh, as you conduct um, one of the papers that you will be working on the, the midterm paper which will help you uh, better understand how you can um, conduct a biopsychosocial spiritual assessment of, of clients. Again, um, thank you so much. You have a great week.